Well, it was really fun because it ended up being in 12 magazines. Well, this was kind of early into the engine cover thing, so yeah. it got special attention. I actually covered auto racing in Europe in the early 70s. And oh, really? It was stolen and abandoned on the Ohio Turnpike in 1957. I bought Enthusiast. these cars and started on the restorations. So what's this is an original this paint survivor. But I wanted them to look like the wheel covers that came on 61 Thunderbirds. This, heck, this car had a purple velour interior, six taillights, <laughs> a rear spoiler. And he said, I want this Ford truck out of here. So wow, that was how it started. Welcome back, guys. A uh, little bit different episode for you this week. We're obviously not in the garage. We're in the, uh, the free fare lane. The old sweet as can be starts every time. Cold start. <laughs> so good. So good. Oh. <laughs> oh. Anyways, we are on our way to look at an incredible collection of cars. I met a man this summer at a car show uh, that we put on that, that is a car designer. And he's invited us to come down and look at his collection of custom cars. And you are not going to believe some of the stuff that he's got here. Caitlin is looking forward to it, right, Caitlin? That's not me. <laughs> Yes, Hi, I am. <laughs> so thanks for joining us this week on Crossroad Garage and Salvage. We're actually waiting on some parts to come in for the front suspension on Caitlin's truck. We haven't given up on swapping the 41 cab onto that 2000 power stroke, but uh, we, have we, three don't, months. we don't have the parts to do it. So this is what you're getting this week from us. It's another look at an amazing car collection. I don't know about you though, I'm ready for some dinner. Me too, which reminds me. I was out at dinner last week. Uh, as I was about to leave, this waitress, she looks at my food and she goes, you want a box for that? And I look at her and I was like, um, no, but I will wrestle you for it. <laughs> if you enjoy what you see this week, tell them what to do, Caitlin. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. You heard it from the authority. I was done, son. Hey Barry. Hey Steve. Good to see you again. Same here. It's my daughter Caitlin. Hi Caitlin. Hi. What's going on? Well, we're here to look at some cars. Cool. Well, we've so. got some. <laughs> I've seen a few of them, but uh, I haven't seen even a few that I'm seeing on the pictures on the walls here. Are these all of your designs yeah, those here? Those are the uh, eight that we've done so far. So this is the. Is this the Buick that yeah. we saw last year? And then this is the one you brought to our show this year. So yes. cool. Well, um, I guess we'll start where where you want to start. Um, take I us, guess one of the buildings outside. <laughs> take us to the show. All right, let's go. All right, so this summer was the GTO celebration at Good Guys. Were you a part of that? Yes. So you 60th, were out there? Yeah. I didn't know that this car was yours, but I remember walking past this one in the lineup and seeing it. That's incredible. So tell us a little bit about the GTO project. Well, this uh, normally the projects start with a solid, clean base, but since the GTO is an original GTO and a first year, uh, it took a lot of work. Uh, we found out after we started doing media blasting that the quarter, rear quarter where you are right now was uh, pop riveted on the car. Oh, and so essentially, <laughs> essentially the quarters, the front fenders, and everything else was massaged. So the only thing that was totally okay was the roof and the hood. Wow. So it was a good start. But So did you build this for yourself or was this a customer yeah, built car? Yeah, this was for myself. This was the basically the fourth car as Penfound Design. Yeah, this was kind of the first major muscle car, modern muscle car thing. Wow. But the others were a little more straightforward customs. I mean, even down to just... Yeah, the, there's a lot of details. The reveal. When Barry brought his cars to our show this summer, I just remember walking past it three or four times, and then every time I walked past, I saw something different. I mean, this is just incredible. There's, there's so well, much going on here. The idea is somebody can look at it in five minutes, or somebody can look at it for an hour. Wow. And uh, that way, it, the main thing is, do you like how it looks? Yeah. That's the start. I love how that you go from there. I love how it looks. But uh, 
Well, this all started with there was fake plastic engine turning on the dash on 64 GTOs. Uh huh. So that ended up being kind of an element for the whole car. And this is not fake plastic. No, this is all metal. So it was used for the grill, for the back panel, yeah. and for all the interior components and the door panels. Wow. Look at this up here, Caitlin. Yes. The tachometer here. If you can see that through there. And that's, I try to make sure the cars have Pontiac elements. If it's Pontiac, yeah. you know, make sure that there's some relation to it. Like these were similar style on a full-size Pontiac 2 plus 2 in that era. Everything is so kind of... So those functional vents then? They actually yeah, go yeah. through? Mm -hmm. So what's going on with the door handles here? Is it... One of the doors I've really fallen in love with is C6 Corvette. And that's what these are. It's got an electric release built into it. So oh. that's all you have to do is press a button inside. I like it because it's a very stylish way to still have a door handle. So before we're done here today, we're going to get this thing started and you guys can hear it run because I'm sure it sounds... Oh, as good as it looks. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. So don't go anywhere. We got a few more cars to see, but let's pop the hood and see what's going on underneath here. Can you do right. that for us, Barry? Yep. Pontiac block. Looks like Edelbrock heads. It's the original motor. So this is the original motor. <clears throat> yeah, but it's bored out to 449 cubic inches. That but, would explain. Yeah. The 449. <laughs> and uh, it's a newer tri-power setup that was built, and we used it for this, and tried to have it look as much Pontiac as possible. So I'm looking around here. You obviously have some memorabilia and stuff going on. And I, by the way, I really like the old KTM bike. But this isn't a shop where things no. are being built right here. No. So where are these being built? Essentially, the way I do it is I'm the kind of general contractor designer. So I get the format together and establish the ground rules and then let guys work in their own shops. Okay. So the upholstery guy has done all the cars, the guy that I use, but different, usually different groups for each car. Different builders. Yeah. Is the paint a custom color or is that? Yeah. The... I work with PPG with their stylus studio uh -huh. and uh, we kind of sit down and for this car, I like the, the start with the blue, but I said, this car is going to have a red interior. So can you get some red in it? And there actually is some red in there. Yeah. I can see it on the highlights. And then we do this I love thing. The, the, the flat. Yeah. That's Matt something under that the... I kind of do each time is use a flat version of the body color because the less the engine stand out. Yeah. You said it, you said as we walked in here, it's been getting a lot of attention. Is that like just at shows or is there, has there been, you know, publications or studios well, that have been I kind looking of do, at it? I, I've got a marketing advertising kind of background. So I tend to do a lot of media as well for, okay. especially printed stuff. Yeah. So this was just in a GTO Association of America uh, magazine two months ago. Okay. So it's kind of all part of the 60th anniversary thing. So how long has it been finished? Uh, this guy was done in uh, 2012. So tell me about the wheels. You mentioned these are from uh, Boyd Coddington's shop. Of course, well, Boyd's, Boyd's dead now, but... Well, this was actually... Boyd himself was involved in this. It was okay. one of the last things he did. I wanted the wheels to have... That's actually... Each spoke is a Pontiac emblem. And, and then uh, uh, you went with the single windshield wiper Lamborghini style... <laughs> yeah, it was just an idea to try to kind of clean it up more. Yeah, it does. But then you find out you have to rework the whole valence because those vents are all different shapes and stuff. So oh, man. it's pretty major stuff. Yeah, that metal work. That would have been a big uh, change order, huh? Yeah. Well, what's the story on the KTM? Well, the KTM, I did work. It was one of my first client jobs and uh, did promotional work for them. And they uh, um, gave me the motorcycle as part of payment for work that I did for them. Wow. And I'm in the process of thinking about selling it because it's never been ridden. It's never had gas in it. Whoa, that's it's actually fresh. a new motorcycle. Brand new, never. Yeah, right. She was standing outside going, Dad, I, I want to buy a dirt bike. Because, yeah. She wants to learn to ride a motorcycle, and I told her not on the road. So that's, what year is this? It's got to be 79. 79? Yeah. Brand new. Yep. Yeah, that's really Easy cool. Easy to like. Really, really cool. Oh, whoa. Well, the, <laughs> you're reading a magazine. <laughs> All right, so what are we looking at here? Well, car interest for me started with kind of classic cars and sports cars from yeah. earlier days. Yeah. And these two Corvettes were actually found at different times and ended up both being 66 427 wow. coupes. One with the 390 horsepower motor, the yellow car. And this is the 425 horse one. 
solid lifter versus non-solid lifter. Yeah. What does the off mean? Is that, does that just twist off to... Um... Well, they're kind of... They're similar to the original knockoffs, but they bolt on. So they leave the knockoff thing, because the knockoffs are so dangerous to use. Yeah, yeah. So, so they would have... This would have been a reverse thread. You'd have a lead hammer. Yes. That you would knock on this, and it would spin that. To loosen and that's, it. And that's like the only... It's a center lock nut for the wheel. Okay. So knockoff style wheels, that. yeah. So, but these are reproduction bolt on yes with a, a look because each one of these if you find a new old stock one is four or five thousand dollars a piece this wow. heck this car had a purple velour interior six tail lights <laughs> a rear spoiler and uh, six tail lights you said yeah and the front clip was broken off from another car so what's uh, just purple wasn't your favorite color or what? well these these ended up <laughs> N ncrs is national corvette restorer right. society yeah so that's, that was the goal for these. So okay. they're painted with lacquer, and they basically have... I, if you had asked me, I would have suggested they were original paint, because I can, I can tell that they're not... Yeah, lacquer's different. They're not uh, base clear. Yeah. And, uh, and then they're judged. Uh, top Flight is a car that's 91% or higher, and they're judging. And I think this was 94, that was 96. So this, are they both four-speed cars? Yeah. Was that the only option on them at that? Well, you could get a power glide line. with the 390. Because that was basically the same engine that came in an Impala. They're and completely different personalities. Yeah, I would imagine. Because, I mean, they, just the way they would sound, I would imagine, would be different with the side pipes on right. this one versus what would be a stock replacement, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, and a solid lifter car versus non. So. But they wow. do certain things on these cars when they're judged. And if you make corrections too much, then you're hurt. Something like this, that little nub, if you fix that and straighten it, you lose points in judging. Oh, this so, one right here, Caitlin? Yeah. See that? And this photograph is what happened to the car after it was first judged. We went back to the first restorer's garage, and there was a fire in the garage. Oh, no. And so it got burned from here back. So it was a real adventure at two o'clock in the morning, getting a phone call saying, I think I burned your car up. Oh no. And he got burned some too. So his, it was the first worry about him first. And that this. Is, that is so cool. 55 Thunderbird is an original paint car, 40,000 mile car. Two summer, three summers ago, I decided that I wanted to try to have it get a 60s kind of look. So we changed wheels and tires, bumpers, interior few other details and kept all the originals so it can go back to stock if it needs to yeah but there are a lot of little things done on this car the seats are volkswagen gti material is the is the grill different the grills new yeah what's uh what's a 55 thunderbird got under the hood uh 292 it's the only motor that was available i've got a 62 fairlane and that's the most I know about Fords. It's okay. Like got a 170 inline six in it. <laughs> I wasn't a big Ford person, but now there's more Fords sitting around here than there are yeah. others. You know, when, when we lived in Colorado, seeing stuff like this was like you had to go somewhere to a special show or museum right. or whatever. Northern Ohio, there is so much car culture in this part of the country. It's astounding. Actually, <clears throat> good guys a few years ago put a dot on Columbus went 450 miles outside of that, and it was 65% of the collector cars, custom cars, and hot rods in the United States. Are within, within, within that a day's drive of Columbus, which would make sense for why the Columbus yeah. show is almost 7,000 cars. Right. So where did this come from? This, was this a Northern Ohio car? Um, actually, there's an interesting story with the car. It was stolen and abandoned on the Ohio Turnpike in 1957. <laughs> and they got the car back, and... Uh, put it in a storage building for the wrecker, and it was there for 10 years. And then they decided that they could sell the car because the owner never reclaimed it. And it went to uh, a guy in Vermilion who uh, kept it another three or four years and then sold it to a third or a second owner. And then uh, he sold it to the guy I bought it from who was in his late 70s when he decided to sell it. Where do you get a reproduction steering wheel that looks like that? That's actually a one-off steering wheel. And then these, these headrest kind of scoops back here are not original to the design either. No, right? actually they're copies of the hood scoop reversed. And, uh, oh, sure. That's, uh, that, but the interior guy 
made a big deal after the seats were done. He came in and redid these because so the, the red stripe had to line up. <laughs> so. I've, got, I've got a wood bed in the back of my '47 Chevy that I was real particular. When I tell people, I was like, I had to make sure the grain lined up on the section that I cut out, and right. and, and they're like, that's really dumb. And I was like, couldn't live with it otherwise. You're not just an old classics. You're a collector. Well. I bought Enthusiast. these cars and started on the restorations and then built the first car, the first custom. Okay, which we still haven't seen yet. Yes. You guys are going to want to see this Buick. But these cars were both similar performance at the time, ZR1 yeah. Vi yeah. Viper. But they, so is this a 94? 90, uh, 95. Right. Um, and they both super in demand when they first came out. Right. And then the market kind of slowed down for them. So I bought them at the... Maybe the lowest point. So I've heard, and of course I'm I'm working off what other people are telling me and what I hear, because I've never driven a Dodge, Dodge Viper, but I've heard that the first couple of years of production, these things are just like an absolute animal. Where the later years, the last couple of years they were doing it, they were they were a lot more manageable on the road. Yeah, and, they did a lot and, more with. But this. The cool part about the early cars, and this is a 95, so 92s, 3s, and 4s are all built before these. Okay. Um, but side curtains, I like that idea. No door handles, I like yeah. that idea. Yeah. It's just uh, very much like a later Cobra. These, and have, like, these what, have forward flipping hoods, Caitlin. Yeah. Come all the way forward. <laughs> That's a V10. These are, yeah, they're naturally aspirated, aren't they? Yeah. Go ahead, you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the bolsters on the side there. Yeah. Keep you pinned to your seat when you're going around a corner. What's the mileage say on there, Caitlin? Uh, it says it should says be about fifty five hundred. Low, I bet, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a ZR one. Yep. What was unique about this compared to a base model Corvette of the same year? Because this is what a ninety four, ninety three. Uh, ninety. Oh, this is a ninety. Yeah. Okay. This is the uh, first year. Um, the motor is totally unique, shares nothing with the regular 350. It's a 350, but it's a four cam, 32 valve. Wow. So were they borrowing any technology from the, what would come later as like the North Star V8s that were 32 Well, I valve? think so, but actually they contracted with Mercury Marine to build this motor. Oh, really? That's who did it for them. Oh. So if you look at the window sticker over there, see what the ZR1 option is. And what the base price is of the car. Base price, Caitlin, $31,979. ZR1 Special Performance Package, $27,056. Almost double the price to get the ZR1 package. Was it, was it suspension work there was, as well? It was, or? it was the early adjustable suspension. Okay. And basically every option was standard. Yeah. Plus, although people think ZR1s look like other Corvettes, they had different rear quarters wider rear wheels and uh like i say every option that was available on them huh. too so that is very sophisticated car compared to the viper yeah that uh the viper was kind of like it just that seems so minimalistic to me yeah that was the whole idea and i think uh if you like it you like it if people want something super sophisticated yeah. not even the later vipers are not all that sorted out what's up guys just want to take a quick minute here to say thank you Caitlin and I didn't start this channel to be uh, as big as it is today. And the truth of the matter is we're now recognizing there's a ton of more potential for growth. And to accomplish that, we know that we're gonna have to work hard to develop a loyal base of viewers and subscribers, and now channel members. And that's what I wanna talk to you about today. For buck 99, you can join the Shade Tree Nation here on YouTube as a channel member. And that's gonna give you access to behind the scenes footage a couple times a month. Uh, a monthly live stream with Kaylin and myself where we get to interact with you about ideas and concepts and thoughts on the work we're doing, thoughts on work we should be doing, things we should never do again. That would be helpful to know. Uh, and then we're also going to give you 15% off of all your purchases at CrossthreadGarage.com. The first 20 of you are going to get a free t-shirt from Kaylin and I. The American by birth, Shade Tree Mechanic by Necessity, Shade Tree Nation T is going to come your way. Click the button next to the subscribe button down below that says join and it will bill you through YouTube every month. And we would be so grateful for your participation here in the shop because without you guys, none of this really makes 
sense. So, thanks. All right, this is where the, oh man, you got a Chevy Love. Barry, killing me. Well, I go to I, an event. I love Chevy Loves. <laughs> I go to an event every year called Dropped and Destroyed uh -huh. in Akron, because they really love the ride tech on the Buick and the Cadillac and stuff. Yeah. And a lot of those vehicles there are mini trucks, yeah. Rangers and S10s. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, I'd really like to do something sometime that would be unique and not have the kind of graphics and stance that those guys have. So we've already got a drawing together on this car. And I found this uh, two years ago. Wonderland. Yeah, it was the wow. city vehicle for that town. And one of the unique parts is wow. it's not all rusty. That is awesome. But every yeah. panel is dented. If it came from Wyoming, it's, I mean, it's out west. We, we lived yeah. in Colorado for 12 years. Nothing right. rusted out there. I know. Nothing. Well, people said, though, that these rusted on the boats on the way over from <laughs> when they were made. But it's yeah, cute. because these were these were basically a Isuzu truck, yeah, right? They were an Isuzu pup. Yeah. But I like the fact that it's Chevrolet, so I can basically do anything motor-wise. Right. Uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about, if you could ever find one, is a Cosworth Vega motor, which would be very cool for this. I I've think. got a, uh, I've got a uh, Cosworth Vega. Little preview here: Cosworth Vega Will It Run episode coming up on a oh really on a car that's been sitting for thirty years in a storage unit. Will it run? I don't know yet. <laughs> We're gonna well, find out. <laughs> if uh, but it's a seventy-five okay. Cosworth Vega, the fuel injection's been taken off. It's got dual uh, side draft Weber's on it right now, but he has the fuel injection stuff. He just... Like I say, this this will be kind of a search for a motor, and it doesn't have to be that motor. It doesn't have to be a Cosworth yeah. Vega motor. It would just be a cool choice if one it showed would be up. Real, it would be real neat. Yeah. I definitely want to see this one finished, but I love the diesel-powered ones. Oh, yeah. That there was the first there generation? Was a, there was a this few is years. the second generation. Yeah, so the first generation had more of a utility bed with, like, cleats on the side for tie-down straps oh, yeah. and stuff. Right, like the early Mazda yeah. stuff. Yeah, we had an older guy in our church in Colorado who had, had one that had, like, 60,000 miles on it. Right. He drove it. He just drove it, you know, in town two, three miles at a time. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Well, I can love show it. you the uh, artwork for this, but I don't share that. I don't want to shoot that because I'd love to see we it. Don't, but I won't put it on right, here. We yeah. don't release that stuff. So, so you got an Impala SS project here. Is that a true SS or is that just yes. a clone badge? Yes. And that's getting to the place where it might have to be a restoration instead of what I intended to do with it, which is pretty mild. This is the way this was supposed to look. I always do drawings first. But anyway, that's that's the approach. That's sweet though. And the motor is almost built, so can't show you the drawings, but right, like it's killer. Caitlin, I think we found the car Mom's been looking for. She keeps telling us that she needs a a little two door, and she keeps saying Mini Cooper, but I know she means the new she style. Mean, she means the BMW Mini Cooper. Yeah, not this not one. anything like this. So this is a. Uh, well, I, already, 70, I already saw the windshield here, yeah. so it's a thousand cc. It's got actually lots of room inside. Yeah, I was just gonna say there's actually a ton of room in here. That's awesome. I actually covered auto racing in Europe in the early '70s, and oh really? Bought a panel delivery version of this I to use it. for my work car wow. when I was there. Slept in it part of the time, man. And that uh, is cool. came back and had to buy one. So started looking for one. And that of course everybody looks cool. for a Cooper, but this is a this is a one thousand. So this is the luxury version yeah. of a mini. It's a mini, not a mini Cooper. They start out as this is an Austin Mini. So there's Morris Minis and Austin Minis. This is an oh, Austin okay. Mini. But first front engine transactional car ever for modern era. Yeah, because a cord was a front cord engine was. transaxle. Right. But so this is First car, Buick. Second car, 64 Cadillac. Third car, 63 Impala over there on the wall. Fourth car was the GTO, I guess. Wow. And uh, this was the seventh car, the 61 Thunderbird. All right, so 61 Thunderbird we're looking at right here. We've obviously got custom wheels on it. Door handles have been shaved and done different. This is... That is the factory door handle. No. Yeah, but it had a push button on the door underneath it over here. Down here. So we got rid of that. But I love the pull idea, so. Yeah. It's uh, very cool. Wait, yeah. Where's the button? 
there was a button. It's not there anymore. He shaved it. So there was, like, you grabbed it here. And yeah. pushed it there. Pushed the button down here. Oh. Right. We gotta stop assuming things. I'm telling you, that's, that's a clever design element. There's so much room. So are the wheels uh, like a billet yeah. stock? They're solid, it's solid a wheel? It's a hot rod by Boyd wheel. Okay. Um, there are two or three different, there's cast wheels, forged wheels, and then these are welded wheels, and they use a hoop and a center insert. Here, I'll do it. Don't worry about it. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Cool. Um, but I wanted them to look like the wheel covers that came on 61 Thunderbirds. Yeah. So that was the plan. So guys, yeah. this is the vehicle that showed up at our car show this summer that got me thinking, there's got to be, there's got to be more to this story. <laughs> look at how it's shiny. It's like a pearl color. So we got the swing away steering wheel that lets you get out. So you actually pull it over and it locks in place. You want to pull that hood release again, Steve? Way. Yeah. There you go. You got it. Got it. This is unbelievable. And this car kind of shows how much the design parts worked since the first car. The way the uh, paint looks, the way the engine room looks, the way the wheels and tires relate to the car. Just unbelievable stuff. So how do you, how do you make this swing back out of the way? What's the... It, it should move now, it's in park. Oh, it just, it just pushes? Yeah. I didn't want to start pushing on it and break something. But, so these inserts are even leather. They're made to look like, I, I would have thought that was fabric when I was standing yeah, 10 we, feet away. We had it perforated, so it would look, uh, it's very similar style to the original interior, but it's all new. And uh, power windows all the way around. Yeah, these are very unique cars. Yeah. It's the original motor, yeah. or is this one you had built for it? No, it's the original 390. Original 390. This is a very solid original car. And, and again, part I, love, of this, I love the flat, or yeah. what do you call this, satin, if you're right. finished. And the details a, of the engine and stuff are much more upstream from the beginning. So Yeah. I am in awe. Excuse me. Look at, the, look at the profile of this. And one of the things I did on this, because I just thought it would be neat, is welding the skirts on. So if you need to change the tires, you have to take the axle off. <laughs> See how these look like. What year is this again? 59? 61. 61. Yep. So the taillights look like mom's mm -hmm. on her uh, fair lane. It's incredible that this, this car, Caitlin, is one year earlier than the fair lane that we drove over, drove over here. So this, all the same styling cues, all the same. We're coming out of the same design shop, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, it just picks up. Whoa. <laughs> I've forgotten you had the luggage back here. Yeah. Battery tray. What? Oh, no. That's what? your that's your pump for the... Um, yeah, plus the battery. For the air system. Right. I'm in awe. Yeah, for the airbags. See, I told you we need stickers like this for our cooler. That's got cleaning gear on that one. Man, the attention to detail is it's astounding. All about it. astounding. You have to. So this is the car that started it all for, for Barry, right? This Buick LeSabre. It's a LeSabre, right? Low Sabre. Low Sabre is what you're calling it. All right. But it is a LeSabre. I get that. It is a little low. Low so, in the trunk. Oh. <laughs> And the hood. Lo Sabre. So what did you have to do here to massage the design? There should be a photograph on the front on that board. So it's a 59? Mm-hmm. And it was... Custom, uh, custom grill or was this... Yeah. This is all custom here. Well, just going around the car, the uh, bumpers were modified, grill one off, um, motor rebuilt, but the original nail head engine. So is that, is that one thing for you that you, you don't want to be doing a lot of custom work and then put a huge modern motor in it? You, it 
seems like you're looking for I mean, LS, the engine that came with it. Right. LSs are the standard insert because they're available and cheap. But yeah. I try to go brand and brand. If it costs $7,000 to rebuild that motor or $7,000 to buy an LS, what's right. the difference? Yeah. You know? So, yeah, all these cars are brand and a brand. That is neat. So these push buttons, was that the, the factory? No, it had a regular door handle door. up here, but that was the lock for the original door. So the lock was there, and now it's a release button. For right. The door. Wow. Pop, and, uh, pop that open, Kimo. And since it's not hooked up, you got to go this way. The old body by Fisher. So this car now is how old? Uh, 20 years old. 20 years old since you built it. Is it actually a push button start? No, I put that in. <laughs> I put one of those on my 47 Chevy and all it does is honk the horn. <laughs> That's actually from a S2000 Honda. Oh. It's our security system. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if anybody goes to try and start it, they right. it. There's one under the seat. Oh, don't okay. tell them where the actual one is. Yeah, don't tell is. me. That's going to ruin everything. Folks are so big. Uh. We could have a picnic in the trunk of our fairline. Yeah. Even down to the carpeted inserts here. Just really, really neat. Well, it was really fun because it ended up being in 12 magazines. It ended up uh, being featured in a bunch of different uh, promotional items and stuff. And it was like, all I wanted to do is build kind of a cool custom. And, and you're telling of... me that the, the first recognition of it was when you were at the Good Guys show in Columbus, right? Yes. Yeah. You're 100 feet into the or 100 yards into the show. Right. And somebody's wanting to do a feature in a, an right. article for, on you. So. Talking to guys who've been going to good guys for events, they usually go down there, put their fold down chair in the same place every year, mm -hmm. and sit down and talk to their friends. I never even got to that place. People said, what are you going to do next? And I said, well, I've got this 64 Cadillac that was maybe going to be a restoration project. And uh, it ended up being this. So this car, this car went to whole different places from this car. It went to good guys, as long as you kept the suspension up a certain amount. Once it got completely slammed, then it became another car that had to go in its own way. And this car actually made money going to lowrider events. <laughs> really? <laughs> and uh, it was a great experience because uh, going to those events is just socially a whole different animal. Yeah. From going to good guys or NCRS or, or NSRA, whatever. But, Cadillac uh, Cambier. It was uh, a lot of fun, and still is. It, uh, a friend of mine took it to a traditional Cadillac LaSalle Antique Car Club event, and when he drove in, they were like, we don't want this car here. Go park, park back in the corner. Park back in the corner and open the doors and slam the car, and it won best of show at the end of the day. <laughs> and he, of course, the people running the event didn't like that at all. <laughs> Just unbelievable. 64, you said? Yeah. But the Cadillac and a Cadillac thing, that's yeah. cloth from a 77 Cadillac. I is had that... a 64 and a 65 Lincoln Continental mm. that I wish you had back. I had back, yeah. Those oh, are the two cars. Awesome. Two cars I'll never never have an opportunity again. Yeah. I Maybe I will, but I bought them right. I bought them in February of 2020. Uh -huh. March 2020, the world turned upside down, and I said, I got 20 grand wrapped up in two cars. I probably so. shouldn't have that right, right now. So I sold sold both of them. The 65 was a parts car. It didn't have a title, but it was all there. Right. It didn't have a title. Had the motor just kind of sitting in there sideways, um, and a raccoon had been living in the back seat for a while. But at the mm. end of the day, it's still a 65 right. Lincoln Continental suicide yeah. doors and... Oh, holy cow. <laughs> well, this was kind of early into the engine cover thing. So yeah. it got special attention because I decided to do it kind of uniquely. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, Caitlin. That is wild. So was this the product of 
uh, a sketch that you had put together, or was this yeah. something an artist that was drawing I, your cars? I started, and I was working with the artist when we did it, but I said I wanted to have something that could be cover the engine but also be accessible, and wow. the center section can be lifted up, and the other ones can just be unbolted. But you can just lift that part, yeah. This can be lifted up. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> so <laughs> scratch something. While you're there, so yeah. the, the vents are a thing that actually... Bill Mitchell had done on a Riviera custom that they did at General Motors. The vents here. Yeah, it uses engine vacuum. So when you start the car, they flip open like blinds, like window blinds. Yeah. And then when you shut the car off, they close again. Wow. I just thought it was a very cool look. So So does this kind of cover make it run a little bit hotter with the. No, no, it's never been an issue. Plus, it's got a secondary fan too. That is sweet. Man, that is cool. Love the, uh, what do they call these, dag dagmars? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kind of an iconic styling on the front bumpers. You know of these what that's Cadillacs. about, right? Was it an actress? Yeah. 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 It's named after an <laughs> a actress. Voluptuous an actress. actress from the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, this a... Cadillac and this Cadillac don't share a lot in common, do they? No, no, they don't. So what's this going is an original this paint survivor. I can see that that lacquer is a little thin on top here. Yeah. You, what you try to do with this is do what's called the sympathetic restoration. Yeah. You know, you do the, like the bottom part of the bumpers was done. Um, there, but the interior is original too, which really? is very hard to do. Oh man. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Caitlin, come over here. Caitlin's looking at all these posters on the wall. Watch this right here. So that's a that's a drip rail for rain that kept it going over the outside of the, the door so it wouldn't come in. And it's on a, a closing mechanism with the door here. And there's probably, oh no, there isn't. There's just one right there. Plus flips it was it designed in, to continue this line, continue that trim Oh line. yeah, and it kept that going. That is so slick. And what's the year on this one? What's that? What's the year on this? Uh, 1955. 55. I don't know about you, but I, I think the early 60s was the best design I era. The, it's usually the era where you grew up that people love. I mean, I hear people now saying, man, the cars in the 90s were so cool. Ugh, no. Because they grew up in the I, 90s. I'm, an, I'm, a, almost, I'm almost Gen X. I'm not quite, but mm -hmm. the 80s cars have no appeal to me at all. No appeal at all. It's, it's like music. I'm amazed how many 80s rock stations there are now versus... You know, 60s and 70s and 90s. Because people think history starts when they were born. Yeah, exactly. Caitlin, look, come back here and look at where the exhaust is coming out here. On both sides. This is the thing that... So that's kind of an early Corvette thing. Well, GM was doing all kinds of weird stuff in every division at that point. What's that? <gasps> <laughs> That's the fuel fill. Push it down and latch it. I was going to lift it up again. Oh, it's a button! <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty neat. So cool. But these guys are just you amazing. Wanna, you want to ask if you can hop in there? Go ahead. It's no problem. Steering wheel is amazing. They're so comfy. Mm -hmm. Look at it. A little bubble. That is cool. Like I said, this is what's called a sympathetic restoration. Yeah. So it's basically detailing everything. Into, and it's very well done. But uh, like this stuff, that was original. Um, and all everything else under the hood's original. So just, I love the uh, the old... Like the glass jars and the bags and yeah, and those the... bad wing air cleaners, hot yeah. riders, you know. Oh, they love. They those. were stolen for a long time. Now yeah. they repop them, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even think they're that size yet. So, but that's an original, huh? Yeah, that's an original. So, did you go through and when you said sympathetic, or did you like, did you pull the motor and detail the motor, or is that all original paint there too? The motor was pulled by a, a guy, a super Cadillac fan mm -hmm. in Cleveland who had a shop, and. Uh, he, uh, he detailed the motor and made sure everything was correct. And then the other thing about this car, 
the wheels on this car are called Sabre wheels. Okay. And they're aluminum and steel. And they uh, were a factory option on 55 Cadillacs. Aluminum and steel, huh? Yeah, and they have to be riveted together. And if you restore one and redo it, it's like $1,000 a piece just for the restoration. Then you do the wheel. But yeah, these, because with dissimilar metals, you get a lot of corrosion. Oh, yeah, you? yeah. But while he was working on this car, he said, uh, you were looking for some of those Sabre wheels for your car, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, there's a guy that has some here that look about like your car. They're not perfect, but they look kind of like a survivor. Would you be interested? And I said, sure. And so uh, <laughs> I said, well, come into the shop and I'll show them to you. When I got there, they're already mounted and ready to go. He knew I would have to have them. So that's, uh, that's, that's good, kind of how it works sometimes. That's a good salesman. Yeah, he was a good salesman. Well, Barry, I don't suppose you've got anything else to show us, do you? In the building where you drove in, um, the next project is there, plus a couple other projects to come. Well, Caitlin, what do you think? If you guys don't know this, Mid-60s Ford trucks are Caitlin's absolute favorite, favorite body style, right? Mm -hmm. Looks like one of Mr. Lee would have, huh? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Lee is a, a rancher, not our favorite Korean chef. Are you familiar with uh, unibody pickup trucks? Yes. I mean, I know that they are like a one or two year only. Right. Um, what is it, a 64, 63? Uh, 61 through 63. 61 through 63. Yeah. You know why they're cool? No separate bed. So. Yeah, so that, yeah, so this is all, you right. see how this is all molded into one? Yeah. You can't take the bed off. Yeah. So when they introduced them, if some farmer put a bunch of milk crates in the back and you went around a corner, the doors would fly open. So that's oh. why they only lasted three years. Because it, Twist the whole right. <laughs> unlatched. <Whee! laughs> oh, that's cool. So where'd this one come from? Because this has way too little rust on it to be an Ohio truck. It, it was a project that a guy had that it was just in this state when I bought it like four years ago. And uh, he was a Chevy guy. And he took this in on trade on a project that he did. And he said, I want this Ford truck out of here. So wow, that was how it started. Well, somebody put some new hinges on it for you, didn't they? Yeah, we just did that. But I think this may eventually just have that Y block in it yeah. instead of a coyote motor or whatever. Yeah. Why does it say radio up there? I have no idea. <laughs> That's cool. It almost looks like something's written over there, too. Uh, zero one six zero. There's writing on the, on the so, firewall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think that could be where the factory yeah. chalk marks were? Yep. And it just rusted because yeah. of the moisture held in the wax or, right. or something? That's so cool. That is pretty neat. Because this hasn't been touched much. All right. Well, before we're done here, Barry, why don't you tell us a little bit about the future design projects? Because that's what this custom cab that we talked about already um, is. So somebody might look at this and say, Boy, that looks like a pretty sweet, you know, driver, survivor. What's the motivation for customizing cars that are in this good of condition? Are they, are they in good condition? I try to find cars, cars that need it all but have it all. That's the basic format. Um, but these Corvettes are bargains right now. Oh, yeah. And so I thought it would be a great, great place to start for this kind of autocross project I want to try to do. So this is a, uh, what year is this Stingray? 76. 76. Automatic. Mm hmm Luggage rack. I like that. So autocross is the goal for this. So you're going to do... Autocross of, style. Yeah. Autocross style. Just aggressive kind of low and, uh, and the comment was just a cute car that I thought would make a potential very nice... I don't use the word resto mod. To me, they're custom concepts, so that's kind of the idea for the comment. Yeah, nothing you're doing is really indicative of restoration. Yeah, and resto mods like a 57 Corvette that's got an LS mm -hmm. and different wheels and tires. That's more the resto mod right. yeah. world. Yeah. So, so I mean, this what year is this comment, did you say? Is it 64? 64. 
Right. So, I mean, 64 convertible, anything. Yeah. Is got to be a sweet little, sweet little ride. Has this ever been painted or is this all original paint? That's pretty much all original paint. It was, I think, originally from Georgia. But uh, wow. the theory is if they were building a new 1964 Comet today with the technology that's available and the aftermarket that's available, how would it look? Yeah. So that's like the 64 GTO is like a really good example of that. Right. If they made a 64 GTO today, yeah. what would yeah. it look like? I think it would look like that or close to it. <laughs> Perfect. A great smell. Way to finish out the night, huh? <laughs> well, kiddo, <laughs> what do you think about that? I flabbergasted, dumbfounded, <laughs> in awe. I hope. Shocked, I shook, hope that uh, shaking in my boots. I hope that some of the stuff Caitlin was saying get, got caught on our mics, but. I wanted to make sure that we got him on on a good mic, so I'm not sure we got everything, but I know this one isn't a whole lot of like dad jokes and fun and joking around, but. Here, where are you going? Wrong side of the car. Or I thought you wanted to drive. Yeah, see last time I tried to put it in a gear, I ended up putting it in reverse as we were moving. Cold start. Look at that. 